And it's a big honor also to sort of be the start to the, to the New Zealand uh, uh, ambassador. You can probably not get as far from each other as Denmark as New and, and New Zealand. Uh, it's basically just around the globe. And I've had the privilege of visiting New Zealand myself. And, uh, and there, um, you actually understand the concept of being European when you go to New Zealand. Because when I flew out of, uh, of uh, Wellington, I think it was about a three-hour plane ride to Australia, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is that when you're in Europe, I mean, if you cross the bridge from Copenhagen, you're in Sweden. Uh, you go one hour by flight, you're in London or Brussels or Berlin or Oslo or Stockholm. Or, I mean, this whole, I mean, you suddenly understand that was at least an eye opener for me visiting New Zealand because you suddenly understand um, the richness and diversity and also some of the enormous challenges that Europe is facing, uh, especially these years. And of course, the moving to Brussels, and I've been here for two and a half years now, you certainly understand that, um, you certainly understand also that there are enormous differences within Europe. There's differences in how we think, in how we dress, in how we approach each other in dialogue, on which subjects we talk about, uh, on how we structure our society, on how we uh, work with hierarchy on workplaces, how we work with gender equality, and all these issues uh, that is a, a completely integrated part of, uh, of uh, our culture. As you can see, uh, I have a uh, both uh, artistic and also a political background, uh, having uh, worked as an actor and theatre manager for many, many years. And I've been a member of the City Council in Copenhagen for nine years and served as deputy mayor for five years. Uh, so uh, for me, coming here to Brussels two and a half years ago was a very sort of very good prolongment of a very big interest in culture and art, and of course combined with a, a, a political uh, interest uh, also. Um, the Danish Cultural Institute um, is uh, a, a part of a network of uh, European cultural institutes, and that's basically the last thing I mentioned there: UNIC, European National Institutes for Culture. Almost all the member states in the EU have um, a structure that is similar to us. That can be the Goethe Institute in Germany, British Council, Alliance Française, Institut Français, the Spanish Cervantes Institute, the Austrian Culture Forum, and so forth and so forth. They're very differently structured. We are basically an independent organization. We are 100% funded by the Danish Ministry for Cultural Affairs, and we work, and I'll get back to that, and we work under an agreement between the Danish uh, Ministry for Cultural Affairs and the Danish Ministry for Foreign Affairs, whom the ambassador is uh, representing. Um, but you see different structures in different countries. In, in, uh, in Germany, in, in Austria, the, the Austrian Cultural Forum is an integrated part of the foreign ministry. In, for many countries, it is a part of the work for the foreign ministries. In other countries, uh, like in the UK and Germany, it is independent organizations. Um, but um, we were uh, founded uh, basically during World War II. Uh, it's quite a beautiful story, I actually think, during the uh, occupation. Uh, the uh, director of, the, uh, uh, of the, the headmaster of the University in Copenhagen gathered 140 intellectuals, artists, people who were debating in society, because at that time uh, nobody had any idea how long the occupation would take, whether it would be an on ongoing situation. And it was important to sort of make is a make a, a sort of a statement saying this was the culture of Denmark uh, at the time when occupation started. This was what we talked about. This is uh, the books we read. This is how we wrote. This is the music we heard. This is how we expressed ourselves as a, a people. Of course, that group found out that it was a good way of being together during the uh, occupation and talking together and exchanging thoughts and ideas. And. Uh, and uh, right after the Second World War, the first uh, cultural institute opened in uh, the UK uh, in uh, 1947. And we were actually the second one uh, we opened in 1948, not here in Brussels, but in Amsterdam. But we later on moved there. We have 10 offices uh, worldwide today. You can see it there. We are actually closing Hungary, Estonia, and Lithuania uh, at the end of this year. And we will open in India and Turkey next year. We have uh, all. For the last 75 years, we have moved quite a lot around and, and tried to be as flexible as possible on where we are present. 
Um, I will not go into details about this. My presentation is available uh, afterwards. So, 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 but just to say that we have a very, very broad uh, concept of culture. We also work with science, we work with education. Uh, we uh, have language schools at our institutes teaching in not only Danish, but all the uh, Nordic country, or all the Nordic uh, languages. And we basically try to um, engage in as much uh, events as we can with a very limited staff. Like the bilateral embassy, we are quite a small entity here. Uh, and uh, and if, of course, it's very, very, like I think in all cultural diplomacy, it is very much person orientated uh, and it depends a lot on the person's ability to sort of engage with local partners and so forth. Due to my political background, and I'll get back to that a little later, we have worked also a lot within the sort of the political and EU sphere, which I think is probably uh, a bit more interesting these years, where we also see a change in the development uh, in the sense that Danish culture is very present in Europe at the moment. Uh, some of you are probably aware of the Danish TV series, The Borgen or Killing, um, which is a very good symbol of how we live and how we work and how we think. Um, some of you younger people probably also know some uh, contemporary Danish pop and rock music, uh, Danish painters, Danish uh, literature, which is, I mean, we have a tendency as Danes to take a little bit for granted which I always try to communicate back home, don't do that, we're only five million people. We are a very, very small p uh, group of people, but we are, compared to other European countries, extremely uh, uh, lucky uh, when, when it comes to that. So I basically try, in a very Danish tradition, to sort of sit around the table when Goethe Institute and uh, Alliance Francaise and British Council sort of are, are doing something, and I know that I give them legitimacy in sort of bringing one of the smaller ones around the table <laughs> and uh, and uh, and on the other hand I mean I sort of try to raise the flag as we don't all have the same resources and we we uh, we, we, we we can't take sort of everything for granted in in in, in uh, that sense the uh, work with cultural diplomacy we actually don't like that word so much in Denmark cultural diplomacy uh, we uh, basically more like uh, words like cultural uh, co-creation or cultural cooperation or cultural dialogue um, because diplomacy sort of tends to have a feel to it that you have to achieve something. Maybe the ambassador can correct me in that afterwards, uh, but, uh, but, but, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but um, um, uh, we all sort of try to look at it uh, that way. This is a very, very Danish thing. We are 5 million people, we have tons of stakeholders on a different topic. Denmark is a very network-orientated society, so we don't have one central organization, but we have sort of constructed this International Panel for Culture. That's basically all the stakeholders who have an interest in uh, creating a dialogue with Denmark and the rest uh, of the world. And that is, um, yeah, it says here, the Danish Culture Institute, the Danish Arts Council, you can see architecture, design, arts and craft, film, uh, the developing country, uh, and three different ministries. And, these, uh, and, 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 and this panel uh, sets up a, uh, a strategy that, that covers four years. And the strategy that we're working on at the moment, and this is not the strategy of the Danish Cultural Institute, this is the strategy of the uh, panel. And of course, it, not of course, but it highlights sustainability a lot. Why? Does it do that? Well, because uh, we as Danes have a tendency to think uh, rightfully uh, and probably also along the line of a country like New Zealand that we are quite strong in that field. We're quite strong in um, working with different aspects that has to do with sustainability. Not only a cultural sustainability, but also a sustainability when we talk about green growth, um, uh, district heating, um, uh, looking at new modes of transport, and, and I'll just raise my old flag, but in, in many major Danish cities, and it's a debate that I participate a lot in here in Brussels, uh, in most Danish cities, uh, around 30, 35% of all transport is made on a bicycle. And it's quite interesting to see when you are in this city where 70% of the car rides are five kilometers or less, and you just like, Ask yourself, when did the Belgians or the, or the Europeans living here, when did they lose their ability to walk? It's quite interesting. 
uh, and that's also about sustainability in, in sort of how do you, how do you want to uh, construct and 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 and, and, and create the, the environment that you live in. Um, and uh, the second part of the strategy is culture for children and young people, and that is of course. Uh, believing in a very strong presence of children and young people in the building of the future of our society, in sort of making sure that they are aware of which values that we regard as high in our society. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and there we have a tradition in Denmark to use culture a lot. Chil uh, children's theatre in Denmark is, is very well known uh, also internationally. Like any other European countries, we also have a very, very strong focus on the BRICS country, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and uh, South Africa. Um, and uh, I think that's probably one of the weak points in our strategy, is to have this sort of solo point on the BRICS country in the sense that we are, if we move into India, we are just a drop in the ocean. And I, so, I sometimes ask the question, I mean, we have a tendency in Europe to expect them to know all the 28 countries who are members of the EU and all the capitals of EU and so forth. But if we turn it around and ask ourselves, how many cities do we know the name of in China? Three to five? Maybe six in this environment here. It's not much. And we have to work uh, a lot more in having sort of a unity in European presence in some of these uh, countries. I think that's really one of the, the, the big challenges. Um, the Middle East is also part of our uh, strategy. And then, uh, uh, fifthly, we work a lot with strategic events. That could be when Denmark had the uh, presidency of the European Union. Uh, it can be different royal visits. It can be this year we are celebrating the 200 years of Danish philosopher Søren Kierkegaard, who is not very well, in, in, not very well known in Denmark compared to what he actually is ab abroad. But that has been an, an interesting thing for me now. In the panel, we have for centuries worked with these principles. It has to be quality. It has to have an interest from the outside. I mean, it's not good enough that we just come and say, we would like you to have this. There has to be a local interest for what we want to present. There has to be a focus. Uh, it has to be not only a mutual exchange. It's probably a bit bad translated by me, mutual exchange. There has to be also a mutual involvement. We don't just want to come and present things. We want to make sure that there is a local ownership in, in what we do. Um, it's very important for us that we talk about network organizations and that we have network organizations uh, also to get local partners heavily engaged in this flexibility, simplicity, marketing, and of course a follow-up. Uh, we basically want to create lasting relationships. Um, and I often describe my job that I really like bringing together a Danish partner and a Belgian partner or an EU partner. But then I basically I can close the door and walk out and they sort of stay in a, some sort of a relationship or some sort of dialogue. I tend to describe my work as a, as a success when, when that has been uh, done. Our focus in the Danish Culture Institute is to increase our regional focuses I told you about before, closing offices in Europe and opening in India and Turkey. To, uh, in, in, in Turkey. We are also focusing on sectors again, sustainability, green growth, lifestyle, cultural values, welfare, education, science, children, and young people. And then, um, and then also focus on ways of exploring new ways of collaboration, of co-creation, and definitely also innovation. Um, of course, um, this is words on a paper. Sometimes when you work out in the field, uh, it's more like, I mean, how can you make this succeed? Because there are many, many, many uh, stakeholders uh, in it. I'll just round off my uh, short presentation uh, by um, talking a little bit about some projects that uh, uh, we uh, uh, helped initiating. One of them is More Europe. More Europe is a, a group of cultural institutes like Goethe Institute, the British Council, Institut Francais, uh, European Cultural Foundation uh, in uh, Amsterdam, IFA in Germany, and a few other partners who, uh, in the end of 2012, uh, met and started this initiative on lobbying the uh, European institutions to incorporate uh, 
cultural dialogue, uh, cultural diplomacy, uh, cultural co-creation, more in the diplomatic work of the External Action Service. And, uh, and uh, we uh, actually had a much bigger success than, uh, than we had hoped for um, in the sense that, uh, that uh, the European institutions were very present at the, at the several conferences that we have uh, hosted so far. There's actually a conference in Marseille next week. We've tried to make conferences uh, over the last one and a half year in different places in, in Europe. And, uh, and uh, uh, we work a lot with advocacy, we work a lot with creating debate, and of course we also work a lot with uh, research on this field, because actually there's not a lot of research in this field. Does it actually make a change? Does it, uh, what does it do when we sort of move in, when we talk about democracy building, when we talk about solving conflicts and crises and so on, when we talk about increasing gender equality and all these things in some of the countries that we, we work with? So the research uh, strand is, is, is definitely very, very, very uh, important. I can only encourage you to uh, follow our website. Uh, uh, and as a follow-up of uh, this, uh, we... Uh, uh, Last summer, uh, we won a tender that was sent out by the Commission, uh, which is called uh, Preparatory Action, Culture and External Relation, uh, which uh, was where the Commission asked for a, a mapping of uh, 54 countries, of course the member states, but also 28 uh, other uh, third countries, uh, their work uh, and experiences with working with culture dialogue, culture diplomacy, how were the structures in the different countries, and so forth and so forth. The idea of this is that in April next year, it is supposed to end up with a big conference here in Brussels, and also the presentation of some recommendations for the external action service on, uh, on, on, on this work. And also, I will also ask kindly, at, uh, encourage you to uh, follow this uh, website and also follow the debate that is uh, taking uh, place uh, there. Um, and again, and that is probably the most Danish perspective in this, if I can put any Danish perspective, we are basically much too small to participate in anything like this. But we like the idea of being one of the old member states in Europe, and I don't know what the ambassador said, but I think it's, it's, I think it's, it's one of the ways that we as Danes like to approach this enormous machinery that the whole EU thing is also that we at least say that we at least can say we are sitting around the table we have a saying in Denmark is that you can bite your teeth into the table and just stay there and I think it's a little bit about that uh, that we sort of we 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 we, we try to 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 sort of participate as much as we can uh, even though we are small and we have a very good uh, we have a very very good and I uh, that's probably the best recommendation I can give to, to some of the younger ones who are here. We have a very strong tradition in Denmark of sharing information, of networks, uh, and uh, so we have an enormously good cooperation. Even though we have tons of different offices here in Brussels, I mean, just the ambassador gave me a very useful information about one member of my board was in the city, and uh, shouldn't I sort of get in touch with him? That's very, very probably goes for other also, but I think it's very systematic in, in Denmark, sort of this ongoing information between different stakeholders. And never keep information to yourself. Always share it, share it, share it. Um, I think I stick to my 20 minutes. Thank you for your uh, attention here, my contact information, and if you forgot how I look, I also <laughs> send that. I, it's very seldom I do PowerPoint presentations myself, so I'm just happy when I succeed doing them. <laughs> Thank you very much.